So let's start for the first discussion, the indolence and Spanish colonial rule. Here I will going to present the other works of Rizal written after the publications of his first novel, The Noli Metanghere. So alam naman natin after ma-publish ni Rizal ang Noli Metanghere ay naging aktibong bahagi siya ng La Solidaridad. Ang pahayag ang kanyang itinatag kasama si Graciano Lopez Haina at saka si Marcelo H. Del Pilar. In this topic, ay magpo-focus tayo on his two articles sa La Solidaridad, ang sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos at los agricultores Filipinos, where both critic the Spaniards' accusations on the Filipinos are indolent. Dito aalamin natin kung bakit nga ba tinawag tayo ng mga Espanyol o kung bakit tayo inakusahan ng mga Espanyol na indolent or tamad. Shortly after Rizal published his first novel, Nolimi Tangere, he became an active contributor to the bi-weekly newspaper, La Solidaridad. Two of his essays published on the newspaper were Sobre la Indolencia, De los Filipinos, 1890, and Los Agricultores, Filipinos, 1889. However, he believed that such indolence was not inherent but was caused by the climate of the Philippines, both in physical sense as a tropical country and in a socio-political sense in relation to the social disorders rooted in Spanish rule. So, makikita nyo dyan sa sobre la indolencia de los Filipinos, Rizal acknowledged Gregorio Sanchanos El Progreso de Filipinas that was published in 1881 and was recognized the evident indolence of the Filipinos. So, ginawa niya ang pattern ang article ni Gregorio Sanciano na El Progreso de Filipinas. So, for Rizal, indolence can ultimately be praised to be abuse and discrimination experienced by the Filipinos under Spanish rule, which led to the deterioration of Filipino values. Furthermore, he pointed out that his essay that it was imperative to study the causes of such indolence so that proper solutions should be conceptualized. He compared it into an illness by saying that indolence of Filipinos must be properly diagnosed before prescription could be made. Especially, there were the economic policies implemented by the Spaniards that required Filipinos to pay unreasonable taxes or tribute and render polo e service that mandated forced labor on the Filipino males 16, 16 to 60 years old for a 40-day period. We all know kung gaano ang paghihirap ang naranasan ng mga Pilipino way back before 19 centuries. So sabi niya, the productivity of the Filipinos was gorged through the welter they serve as purpose to the Spaniards. Filipinos were tagged indolence once they showed any disagreement or resistance to what is being asked to them. So during that time, sa tribute or sa polo-wise servico, ang mga Pilipino ay hindi sumusunod sa mga Kastila o sa mga Espanyol o sa mga Praile. Agad naman nila itong sinasabihin or inaakusahan ng mga tamad. Pero syempre, knowing all the sacrifices they did during that time, yun nga, sino ba naman ang hindi tatama rin sa pagtatrabaho? So ating aalamin kung ano yung naging stand ni Rizal tungkol dun. In the essay, Rizal linked two factors to the indolence of Filipinos. First was the limited training and education provided to the Filipinos for the Spanish government feared possible insubordination and retaliation. Second was the lack of national sentiment of unity among Filipinos caused by the stigma that Filipino culture was inferior to foreign culture which compelled the humble submission. Even these factors concluded that the solution to Filipinos was education and delivered a liberty from oppression. Yun ang dalawang dahilan ng nakita ni Rizal kung bakit tamad ang mga Pilipino at yan ang kulang sa kanila at bakit sila nag-come up sa ganitong values. And now let us proceed sa kanyang pangalawang pinablish dun sa La Solidaridad, ang Los Agricultores Filipinos. In the essay, Rizal recommended to the Minister of Colonies to consult Filipino tillers who would be affected by any agrarian problem and to assist them. Rizal pointed out that calamities were not solely to be blamed for the poor harvest of Filipino farmers, but rather the abusive colonial policies such as polo wise cervico that minimized the productivity of farmers. Rizal also brought to attention the problem of banditry and thievery in rural farms. 
Kasi dito sa essay niya na Los Agricultores Filipinos, dito niya inilahad ang kanyang mga mungkahay tungkol sa pamamalakad ng mga farmers sa Pilipinas. Dito rin niya inilathala ang kanyang rekomendasyon sa gobyerno kung paano makakatulong o kung paano matutulungan ang mga local farmers. Nakalagay dito, In Los Agricultores Filipinos, Rizal commended the intention of the Spanish colonizer to develop agriculture in the Philippines as a means to social and economic advancement. When he was exiled in the Pitan, Rizal deducted much of his time tending the farm he bought in Talisay. So when he was exiled in the Pitan, ang kanyang pinagkaabalahan ay pagpa-farming. Ang lahat ng natutunan niya sa Europa ay inapply niya rito. At yun, madami siyang realization that time. So, yung sa thievery and banditry in the rural farms ay alam naman natin na hanggang ngayon ay existing pa rin siya. At may mga part pa rin sa ating bansa na kung saan existing pa rin yung pagnanako o yung kalupitan na naranasan ng ating mga farmers. And bakit kasi during that time, the inability of colonial guards to provide adequate protection to the farmers and their farmlands, Rizal urged farmers to be equipped with guns to defend themselves against the lawless elements. Rizal demanded Ministry of Colonies urgent solution to this problem pero as we expected, ano ba naman ang ating aasahan during that time? Pre-request si Rizal sa gobyerno na bigyan niya ng kapangyarihan ang mga local farmers na protektahan ang kanilang sarili pero as we expect, hindi pinakinggan ng gobyerno. So, yun ang dalawang article na pinablish niya sa Los Solidaridad. Ang sobre la indolensya de los Filipinos na tumutukoy sa katamaran ng mga Pilipino o sa mga akusasyon ng mga Espanyol tungkol sa katamaran ng mga Pilipino. At ang Los Agricultores Filipinos, yung paglalahad ng mungkahi sa gobyerno kung paano susuportahan o proprotektahan ang mga local farmers that time. So let's start for the next discussion, Rizal Abandonment Assimilation. In this part naman, let's find out kung bakit munti-munti ka nang sumuko si Rizal na ipaglaban ng kalayaan ng Pilipinas at bakit pumasok sa isipan niyang iwan yung ganitong nasimulan niyang gawain para sa bansang Pilipinas. Basically, we will go to present to you the circumstances that prompted Rizal to consider other means of campaigning for reforms for the Philippines. So, after the series of setbacks, both in the Philippines and Spain, Rizal was set to move forward to demand change from the colonizers. Kasi yun nga, the lack of significant progress in the campaigns for the reform led by the religious and other propagandists prompted many Filipinos to believe that such campaigns were futile. Para na-realize ni Rizal na yung kanilang mga efforts since sacrifices is walang kwenta, walang progress, o walang pagbabago. So this rendered them hopeless and uninterested in supporting the campaign. So, nawala na sila ng motivasyon nawala na sila ng interest para sa pagbabago o para sa kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Filipinos in Spain were also losing motivation. Other opted to passively participate in Filipino initiatives while others decided to find their own ways to take part in more active campaigns against Spain. This had been the scenario among the Filipino nationalists in Spain. Personal rivalries among Filipinos also arose and became a hindrance to the formations of concrete plans and action. Graciano Lopez Jaina and Jose Rizal's withdrawal from La Solidaridad was caused by disagreement and differences in ideals and aspirations. This left Marcelo H. Del Pilar to match the newspaper single-handedly. In addition, the desire of other Filipino nationalists to establish a new organization to counter the Spanish rule resulted in setback on the efforts initiated by La Solidaridad. So ito yung time dahil sa magkakaiba sila ng principles, magkakaiba sila ng idea para sa pagpapalagaw ng La Solidaridad, nagkaroon sila ng hindi pagkakaintindihan o pagtatalo. At ito nga, ang naging ugat ng kanilang paghihiwalay at naiwan si Claridel sa La Solidaridad. Samantalang si Rizal naman at saka si Graciano Lovell sa Haina, at yung iba pang mga contributor ng publication ay nagkanya-kanya. So nakakalungkot na hanggang sa ibang bansa ang ating mga propaganda ay nakaisip ng ganong gawain na parang naghiwalay o nagbuklod sa isa't isa. So many believe that it would be better to be part of an organization with members united. Rizal, Del Pilar, and Haina toward one goal instead of being an organization where personal rivalries hinder concrete actions toward great nationalism. Sabi ko nga, napaka-unprofessional naman ng mga tato kasi tampuhan na naghiwalay pa. Pero hindi natin sila masisisi dahil siguro dahil sila 
ay kapamadamdamin sa isa't isa kaya dumating sila sa point na nagkakahiwahiwalay. So yun, madaming mga Pilipino or maraming mga propagandista ang nagkanya-kanya during that time. One of the predominant reform loved by the Filipino was representation in Spanish Cortes. So in this time, nabigyan ng chance ang mga Pilipino na umupo sa kongreso at magandang hearing. This move have been given Filipinos a voice in the Spanish government, though in limited capacity. Such representations was previously granted to the Filipinos but was taken back. The lack of concrete commitment on the part of Spanish government only made the representation of Filipinos barely enough to materialize. So nagbago din ba? Inalis din kaagad ang ganong opportunity para sa Pilipino na ikinalungkot naman ng ating mga propagandista. Around that time, Rizal was also preoccupied with the troubles of Hacinderos in Calamba, whose situation he already brought before the course of Spain. For Rizal, the lack of Philippine representation in the Spanish Cortes and the denial of justice to the appeal of Filipinos over agrarian problems had proven the improbability of campaign for Filipino rights. So nung time na gulong-gulo din ang isipan ni Rizal, dahil yung kanyang pamilya na naiwan sa Pilipinas ay kasalukoy ang nagkakaroon ng matinding problema sa kanilang buhay. Dahil ito yung time na ang problema ng Kalamba Hacienda ay umabot na sa hukuman. So, kumbaga, madami ang iniisip ni Rizal during that time. So, meron pa siyang letter noong 1887, sabi niya, The peaceful struggle must remain a dream, for Spain will never learn from her earlier colonies in South America. But in the present circumstances, we want to separation from Spain. All we demand is more care, better instruction, better officials, one or two representatives, and more security for ourselves and our property. Spain can still win the Philippines for herself forever, if only Spain were more reasonable. The situation became more complicated for Rizal after his mother and sister were arrested in Manila. After several days of imprisonment, they were asked to go back to the court in their province on the foot before they were finally released. In a letter sent in 1891, Rizal wrote, In our countrymen, hope us here in Europe. They are certainly mistaken the field of battle is the Philippines. There is where we should be. So i-highlight natin yung sinabi ni Rizal na the field of battle is the Philippines is where we should be. So yun ang sabi ni Rizal kay Blumetrit. Rizal set the course for his return to Manila after the publications of his second novel, El Pelvus Terusmo. All copies of the novel were shipped to the Philippines. Upon his arrival, he established a new organization, the La Liga Filipina, a secret society that embodied the ideas Rizal represented in El Filibus Turismo. This included the calls for the provision of mutual protection, defense against all injustice, and promotions of instruction and education among all Filipinos. Sabi ni Rizal sa letter niya kay Blumetrit, the battle is the Philippine is where we should be. So kaya naman nag-come up si Rizal sa isang idea o umuwi sa Pilipinas after mapublish ang kanyang ikalawang book ni El Filibus Perismo. So that that time, tinatag niya ang La Liga Filipina na naglalayong buhayin ang katauhan ni Simon Ibarra. So that's the end of our discussion. Again, a pleasant day to one and all.